play too much. I play too much. I don't need my mask, though. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I need my water right here. Let's go, babe. Y'all ready to go? Y'all, man, come on, man. Let me tell y'all, sir. I keep telling y'all, don't nothing stop the 9 o'clock. No matter. I, I, I got a meeting to get to. I'm going to do my 9 o'clock. I'm going to shoot to the meeting. Y'all already know. Pastor, you, 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 you lie to see me come out the sky in a, in, in, in a helicopter or something. Man, God, good. All that. All that little jibby jibby jab and all that noise they be making about the Bible and about God. Man, we serve an awesome, awesome, awesome God. John B, let me get you. Let's get it in, babe. Good morning. I don't know what I need. Got my Bible, got my water, got my laptop. Have my word in my heart, we're gonna run it. Y'all already know we're in the sixth chapter of Proverbs. Yesterday we were in the sixth chapter of Proverbs. We dealt with what? A lot. We know we dealt with what we dealt with proud, a proud look. Can we, we went and grabbed something out of John, grabbed something out of James, grab something out of Peter. We just gonna run this whole entire Bible. 2021 we slow it all the way down. Had a few people call me yesterday. Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike, <laughs> one lady told me, she said, Pastor Mike, I don't care what they say about you. Keep doing what you're doing. I said, you ain't got to tell me that, baby. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. I love you. I do what God say. Don't do what no man say. The man be jibby, jibby, jabby. Man be running all that old noise. Man be talking all that old... I'm going to show you something in this Bible today that's going to blow y'all mind. Que lo que hay, papi? Todo bien, todo bien. Tranquilo. Got the bike to be Spanish. Oh man, y'all gonna be right. <laughs> bueno, dear papi. Uh, no problemo para mí. <laughs> that the mic be English, Spanish, whatever. Now put that in your book. And guess what? I learned how to. Sp I learned how to speak. I learned how to write, and I learned how to read Spanish in the joint. <laughs> I had a Puerto Rican seller. He told me how to read and write it. I had a Canada, a, 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 a Mexican partner. He told me how to read and write Spanish. So guess what? See, when they go to speaking that Spanish, I'll be listening because I already know what they're talking about. I'm proud to make speak Spanish, write Spanish, and read Spanish. But guess what? They're about this Bible. So we're going to get in this Bible, right? And we're just going to run. We're going to go back into Proverbs. We're going to deal with a lying tongue and, and hands that's quick to shed innocent blood. So we're gonna go in second, we're gonna go in first king, 22nd chapter, and pull something out of first king, 22nd chapter. Then I'm gonna go in second king, 27, 22nd chapter, show you something in second king. Then I'm gonna go in second king, 11th chapter. Then I'm gonna go in the third chapter of Revelation, and I'm gonna pull out the church of Thyatira. And we're gonna tie all this stuff in together. Why? Because the whole Bible go together, babe. So guess what? Why they running around here with all that old noise? Why they running around here with all that old faking? Man, I, I, I talked to a lady yesterday. She said, Pat the mic. I said, what's up, baby? She said, since I've been listening to you, you know, this, that, and that. I said, that's cool, baby. She said, I went and bought me a 2020. I said, you were supposed to. Better yet, go buy you a 2021. She said, girl, guess what? Y'all running around here giving all y'all money away, and y'all can't afford to take care of yourself. Ain't God. Ain't God. Ain't God. Y'all, man, y'all been cold playing y'all. But we ain't going to talk about that. We're going to deal with a lying tongue. When we deal with this lion tongue, we're going to get a better understanding on how this thing being played out. Now, when we deal with the lion tongue, yesterday we dealt with the proud look. So we're going to deal with the lion tongue, we're going to deal with the hands that's quick to shed blood. And a better understanding to do that is to go in the book of Kings. When I go in the book of Kings, I'm going to go in the third chapter of Revelation, and I'm going to deal with the church at Thyatira. Why? Because the church, at, the church at Thyatira had a spirit of Jezebel. So when I go in the ninth chapter of 2 Kings, not 1 Kings, but 1 Kings, I'm going to pull out Ahab. Who is Ahab? Ahab was a man of God, but he hooked up with a woman named Jezebel. So he was scared of Jezebel, so he started doing some things against what God told him not to do. So then he then they have a daughter. So Ahab and Jezebel has a daughter. So now the daughter out throwing crosses, just like today. A lot of these young ladies out throwing crosses, and a lot of these young men getting killed. But that's Bible. So we're going to go back in the Bible, and I'm going to show you how there was a time when there was a king. And the king didn't like what was written in the book of the law. 
He didn't like what was written in the, in the book of the law. So guess what he did? He tried to destroy it. He tried to get rid of it. Not knowing that there were other copies of the book of the law that not his king, this guy, Helkiah, Hakia, Hakia, that's his name, Hakia. Hakia found the book of the law. People, let me tell y'all something. Between Matthew and Malachi, God was silent for 400 years. 400 years. So in them 400 years, man was doing whatever he want. But then here come John the Baptist, talking about the kingdom of God. But before that, them 400 years, man did it however he wanted to do it. I'm going to show you in this Bible, there was a time when the book of the law was not being displayed. I'm going to show you in the Bible, there was a time when the book of the law was hidden. Just like today. That's why y'all say, but Pastor the mic, we didn't know that. Why? Pastor the mic, we ain't never heard that. Why? Pastor the mic, we didn't know that was in the Bible. Why? Same thing that happened then is happening now. But guess what? Just like Hakia came and said, look, it's the book of the law, baby. So all the more lying tongues, no more lying tongues. But watch this. We're going to the sixth chapter of Proverbs, and we're going to deal with the 17th verse. But let me tell y'all something. In my philosophical studies, when I studied philosophy, philosophy teaches you how to lie. Philosophy will teach you how to lie. And the reason being because in philosophy, there's something called a white lie, a little lie, a big lie, a small lie. Philosophy teaches you that. Now, for an example, for an example, for an example, watch this. I'm in the house. Somebody come to the house to do me harm. They ask you, where Michael at? Is he in the house? Now, you know they're coming to do me Harm. You know, they're coming to kill me. Let's say that. They're coming to kill me. Will you tell them that I'm in the house or would you say he's not here? What would you do? What would you do? I need my good church folks to tell me if somebody came to your house to kill your child and they know your child was in that house, would you say your child there or he's not here? What would you say, good church folks? What would y'all say? Get your water. <laughs> Get your juice. <laughs> this is going to be very interesting. What would you say? Bible told us. What would you say? If somebody came to the house to kill your child, would you say they not home? They not here? No one's here knowing that they there. Would you use your line tongue to do that? Or would you say they here? What would you do? Church folks. <laughs> Bible told us. What would you do? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one because guess what? Guess what? In philosophy, philosophy will tell you. This is what philosophy will teach you. Philosophy will teach you that it's all right to say that they're not there because that's just a white lie. That's just a small white lie. And it's all right to tell a white lie. Why? Because you see a life. You helped to see a life because they was coming to kill your child. And so you told a little white lie and it helped save your child's life. But is that godly? Is that godly? <laughs> but the Bible say God hate a lying tongue. God hate a lying tongue. So you know what I told that person that said they would say their child wasn't them? I said, you really don't trust God. I said, you really don't trust God. They say, how are you going to say that? I said, let me tell you something. Just because they was coming there to do that, you didn't have to lie about whether your child was there or not. Because when they came to do that, you would have seen the power of God. You would have seen how God moved. But we so used to telling a lie. <laughs> so we're going to tell a lie <laughs> before we trust God. But the Bible say God hate a lying tongue. <laughs> and for you good church folks, us good church folks, us good church folks, well, we lie. Why we got to tell a lie? If I did it, I did it. Now what? If I said it, I said it. Now what? That's on God now. That's on God. But our faith, our trust, our belief will be tested, people. Do you really trust God on some real, real talk? You rather, you rather tell a lie or trust God? Well, what's going to happen? going to happen. What's going to happen? going to happen. 
Let's walk this Bible. Watch this. What are we going to do? Right here. Proverbs. Proverbs 17. A proud look, we dealt with that. A lying tongue enhance that shed innocent blood. A lying tongue enhance that shed innocent blood. I had a member yesterday, right? New member. They asked me something. And they asked me, they said, Pastor Mike, Help me to understand the thing when it comes down to the oil. Let me tell y'all something. Watch this. I'm going to read it from the Bible. A lot of times, we run up there believing what people say about the oil, right? So we run out there and we point oil on everything. Just point oil everywhere. Because we believe, we believe somebody told us that the oil works, right? Okay. But all during the Old Testament, whenever the oil or oil, which one is it? You want to talk New Orleans or oil? Or you want to talk right? Whenever the oil was being used, it was used to anoint people in position such as leaderships, such as kingship. Okay? Watch this. I want to, because she asked me, so I'm going to deal with it. Let me tell you something. When Jesus showed up, when Jesus showed up to the man at the pool of Bethesda in the fifth chapter of John, when Jesus showed up and Jesus asked the man, will thou be made whole? He ain't put no anointment on him. He ain't pulling no oil on him. He ain't pulling nothing on him. But he asked him, will thou be me whole? What did the man say? What did the man say? The man said, I don't have nobody to put me in the water. Jesus said, I asked you that. <laughs> Jesus looked at him and said, bro, I asked you that. Will thou be me whole? The man said, I don't have nobody to put me in the water. The man believed, people. The man believed that the angels would come down and trouble the water. If you got into the water, when the angels came down and troubled the water, you would be healed. He believed that. Jesus said, scratch that. Will you be made whole? Jesus told the man, pick up and take up his bed and walk. Pick up your bed and walk. Go ahead, baby. You all right? Where was the anointing? Where was the oil being poured? It was the word of God, people. It's the word of God. I told you, we didn't set up under so much elementary teaching. We didn't set up under so much immature teaching till we don't even know the word of God. So why y'all around here buying water from Peter Papa? And why y'all around here pouring water all on y'all head? And why y'all running around here buying prayer cloths and cutting the food? All you need to know, all you need to do is know the word of God. That's all you need, the word of God. But have they been teaching it to you? I'm going to show you they haven't, because watch this. Pay very, very, very close attention about a lying tongue. Since March, all the way since March, every day to today, false prophets, false teachers, false prophets, false teachers. Why? Because they've been lying to the people. They've been lying to the people. That's a lying tongue. Now, to teach you something I didn't know nothing about, that's different. Because now you're dealing with perception and deception in a different way. But a lying tongue, God hates that. We're going to deal with the oil. After we deal with the oil, we're going to go in second, we're going to go in first, first chapter of Kings, 22nd chapter, first King, 22nd chapter, and I'm going to show you a lying spirit, which is going to take me to the book of Jezebel, which is going to take me to the book of Revelation, the third chapter, and deal with Jezebel. Why? Some months ago, y'all, watch this. So I don't know why they be trying to come. Don't come for me. Stop playing with me. Don't come for me. I'm going to tell you that off top. So some months ago, right, I'm teaching, I'm, I'm teaching the, the, the church of Jezebel, right? And, I mean, the church of Thyatira. The church of Thyatira had what? The spirit of Jezebel. It had the spirit of the prophetess of Jezebel, right? So somebody come on here talking about, yeah, spirit is gender. Ain't no spirit, no gender. 
Spirit is a spirit. Spirit don't have no gender. A spirit is a spirit. So that's what I told you. I'm going to show it to you in the If I tell it to you, I can show it to you. Watch this. Let's deal with the oil first. That's going to tie into the lion spirit. That's going to tie into Ahab and Jehoshaphat. That's going to tie into the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. That's going to tie into the third chapter of Revelation with the church of Thyatira. Because the church of Thyatira had the spirit of Jezebel. Which ties us back into the 16th chapter of Acts. Because it was in the 16th chapter of Acts when Paul had showed up into Thyatira. And when it was a lady by the name of Lydia. And we're just going to walk this whole Bible because the whole Bible go together. Let's go, baby. All right, here we go. Watch this. Second Kings. Second Kings. The ninth chapter. And Elijah, not Elijah, not E L I J A, not Elijah, but Elisha. Elisha, the prophet, called one of the children, one of the children of the prophets, and said unto him, Gird up thy lines and take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramah Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nishai, and go and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him in inner chamber. Watch this. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, thus says the Lord, I have anointed the king over Israel, then open the door and flee and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramat, Ramat Gilead. Stop. Right there. What you know about Ramat Gilead? That's the first thing. That's the first thing. Okay, now, when we're dealing with this oil, the oil was to anoint people in position, kingship. This is what he was going to do, the young prophet. The same thing that Samuel, the prophet, did for who? King who? Saul, because the people wanted a king. So who anointed the king? King Saul went and poured oil on King. Samuel went and poured oil on King the Bible, the Bible, my heart. I like running. So Samuel and Paul oil on King Saul, right? So they run out there. Don't put your mouth on the man of God for the Bible says, touch not my prophet. What? Touch not my anointing, do my prophet no harm. But you're going to tell me that I shouldn't put my mouth on the man of God. Miss me with that foolishness. You know why? Because the people wanted King Saul. And it was Samuel that went anointed King Saul because the people wanted a king. So God said, okay, y'all got that. But watch this. Since you know everything, watch this. God hate a lying tongue. So stop all that lying. So watch this. What happens? Here it is. King Saul get word. He get word. Now he's about to go kill little David. Why? Because David is the upcoming king. Why? Because King Saul had went to Jesse's house and did what? Poured oil on David and anointed David as king. Even though King Saul was still king, he was fired. He was fired. Get out of here. But watch this. King Saul was asleep one day. King Saul was asleep because he was looking for David to kill David. And while King Saul was asleep, David took his knife Cut a piece of his robe and kept it. What you mean, touch not God's anointing, do his prophet no harm? David wasn't even supposed to touch the king's robe. That's against the law, to touch a king's robe. So when you run out there, know what you're talking about. That's the first thing. So now King Saul, whoa, you know what David said? Boy, if I wanted to kill you, I could have I killed you. Isn't this a piece of your garment? Isn't this a piece of your robe? When I stood over you while you were asleep, I cut a piece of your robe off to show you. If I wanted to do you, I could do you. But I know one thing. I'm the king now. And I, I want people to treat me the way I treated you. Because somebody going to come after me. And they're going to try to do me. And I want them to have the same mentality. Why? Because as we say, you reap what you sow. As we say, we talk about karma. So when you run around there with all that little jibby jibby jab about putting your mouth on the man of God, know what you're talking about. Why? Because God rejected Saul. God said, I rejected that. I regret that I made him a king. 
So now, what, what, what's this foolishness? What's this foolishness? See, y'all just like quoting a bunch of scriptures. But as we talk about in the sixth chapter of Proverbs, God hid a lying tongue. So if you don't know what you're talking about, you're using a lying tongue. Why? Because we're going to finish the scriptures and I'm going to show you what a lying tongue will do to people. But I want the lady to have a better understanding of anointing. What the lady did with the bottle of alabaster oil. She anointed Jesus' feet for a burial. So if it's not a burial or if it's not a head position, what you running around with the oil for? On some real talk. What y'all running around with this oil for? Because Jesus said, see in your soul. He ain't using no oil. He, matter of fact, Jesus used spitting put on the man's eyes. Jesus said, he ain't you heard. Jesus said, speak and you spoke. Jesus said, walk and you walk. Jesus said, come out and you came out. Where was the oil, people? So now, go on to search. Go on 1 King, 22nd chapter. We're going to deal with Ahab and we're going to deal with Jehoshaphat because we're dealing with a lying tongue. Pay very, 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 very close attention to these people because this is what y'all are dealing with today. <sighs> I love this Bible. <laughs> I ate the whole book. I just ate, I just, God said, eat the book. I said, okay, God, watch this. Pay very, very close attention to this. First King, 22nd chapter. First King, 22nd chapter. First King, 22nd chapter. Starting at the 15th verse. And so he came, and so he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramah Gilad to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hands of the king. And the king, Ahab, said unto him, how many times shall I adore you? How many times should I make you swear? Thee that thou tells me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. Dude telling them what's going to happen. Dude telling them what's true. Proverbs 6 chapter. God hit a lying tongue. Watch this. See, we don't want to hear. That's what's, that's what's wrong with us today. <laughs> right now, that's what's wrong with us today. So since we don't want to hear the truth, pay very close attention, people. Watch God work. Watch this. Second Kings, 1 Kings, 22nd chapter. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Just like right now. Just like right now. Sheep just scattered. Lady told me, Father Mike, Father Mike, right now I don't know what to believe. I said, I know, baby. Because they done messed y'all up. They done cold played y'all. Don't watch this. But this is why I watch this. 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 And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, keep in mind, now we got a king of Judah, we got a king of Israel. King of Judah, we got a king of Israel. Why do we have a king of Israel and a king of Judah? The reason why we have a king of Israel, we have a king of Judah is because of Solomon. When Solomon died, the family fell apart. When Solomon died, the family fell apart. This is why we get in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. In the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, we deal with what? The Valley of the Dry Bones. Okay, pastor, get in the pulpit, and he's gonna tell you the uncle, the ankle bone connected to the leg bone, leg bone connected to the hip bone. He's gonna give you that old nursery rhyme. But the truth of the matter is, people, watch this. Watch this. Benjamin and Judah was beefing. Benjamin and Judah was beefing. When Solomon died, the family fell apart. That 37th chapter, that 37th chapter of Ezekiel. God is bringing the family back together. He's about to resuscitate the whole family back together. Benjamin and Joseph come from Rachel. The other 10 children came from Leah. This is why the prophet had to take two sticks, one for Joseph, that represented Joseph and Benjamin, and one for Judah, that represented the other children, and bring them two sticks together so the family can be back together. One. Why? Because in the seventh chapter of Revelation, God names all 12 of the children. And God going to add 12,000 to 12,000, which give us 144,000. And 144,000 is going to be sealed. Why? Because the church going to be gone and the two witnesses going to die. So who's going to tell the people about God? 
that 144,000. Why? Because God made a promise to Israel all the way back when he spoke to Abraham. And God ain't going to go back on his promise. So that's where we get the 144,000 from. This is why in the 37th chapter, he had to bring the family back together. He had to bring the family back together. But yet we run out here with all of those Jimmy, Jimmy, Jam, all the 144,000. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Okay, let me get back to what I was saying. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he will prophesy no good thing concerning me but evil? Told him the truth. The prophet told him the truth. The prophet told the king the truth. Watch this. Verse 9 at 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and his left hand. And the Lord said, who shall, and the law said, and the law said, who shall persuade Ahab? Since he don't believe the truth, since he like a lying tongue, who shall persuade Ahab? This is what the law said. Watch this. Watch this. That he may go up and fall at Ramah. Is that not what we read in the ninth chapter after there was being all, after he had to pour all this all on him about Ramah Gilead? Stay with me. Watch this. And one said on this man, and another said on that man. And there came forth a spirit. And there came forth a spirit. And therefore came a, forth a spirit. And therefore came a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The spirit said, I will persuade him. God is in heaven. Here comes the spirit. God said, who I could use to persuade Abraham. So the spirit came up. It wasn't a female spirit or a male spirit. So this means with that gender foolishness. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. So now the Bible said in the spirit. Watch this, people. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab? That he may go and fall at Ramah Gilead. And one said this man and one said that man. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, the spirit. And the Lord said unto him, the spirit, watch this. Well, with, and he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit. I will be a lying spirit. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also, go forth and do so. How many of y'all listening to a lying spirit? Since y'all didn't want to hear the truth. <laughs> God said, well, send him a lying spirit. <laughs> go ahead, lying spirit, you're going to get him. But you're going to run out there. All the time you've been sitting up under a lying spirit. Why? Because you don't want to receive the truth. So since you don't want to receive the truth, and the New Testament tells us, he'll turn you over to a rape of big mind. I tried to give you what's real. I tried to put you on game, but since you don't want to, hey, do go do you then. God, that, that's God. God said, go do you. So God turned him over to a rape of me. Mine, go do whatever you want. Same thing happened with Ahab. For a spirit say, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in all of his prophets' mouth. Run on me with that foolishness. Yeah, all right. I know. He this, he that. He this, he that, he that, he this. I know, I know. I know. Don't panic. It's not your fault. It's not my fault neither. It's not God's fault neither. Nobody's fault. You run around here with all the noise. You're going to stop playing with God, people. That's what we're going to do. We're going to stop playing with God. I told you, I told you once, I told you twice. One thing for sure, two things for certain. You've been sitting under elementary teaching. I told you once, I told you twice. One thing for sure, two things for certain. You've been sitting under that immature teaching. Don't get in your feelings, get in your Bible. It's not their fault, it's your fault. You got to get to know God for yourself. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going to show yourself. I'm about to blow you. Bible, big. I love this Bible. 
It's called The Book. I love The Book. Watch this. In 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, this talks about the book that was missing. This talk about the book that was missing. There was a king. He didn't want to go by the book. So he got rid of the book. But watch what happened. This for all the people around me. Well, my pastor this. Okay, did he come from the book? Well, my, my pastor, but did he come from the book? Did he know about the book? Or did he hide that part of the book? You know how you tell you, don't read Revelation because it's scary? He hiding the book. Don't read Revelation because you're going to lose your mind? He hiding the book. Watch this. Watch this. 2 Kings 22nd chapter, 2 Kings 22nd chapter. And, he and, Hilkiah, and Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan, the scribe, the scribe, the scribe, I have found the book of the law. I have found the book of the law. So evidently, it was missing. So evidently, they thought it was lost. But he said, I have found the book of the law, and in the house of the Lord, and Helkiah gave the book of Shaphan, and Helkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. He read it. So all that, by the mind, I read the Bible, I didn't see that, because it was hid from you. But now God said, okay, my evil, babe, give it to him, real raw and uncut. Now watch this. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the word again. And brought the word again, 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 again. I told y'all for the last 30 years, they've been cold robbing y'all. For the last 30 years, all they've been begging y'all. Profit, yeah, prosperity, prosperity. Y'all gonna profit, prosperity. Okay, well, where prosperity at now? Where prosperity at now? <laughs> <laughs> about, about, about 15 years ago, y'all, naming and claiming. Oh, this is going to be my waist. This is going to be my basketball. This is going to be my wall in the name of Jesus. I'm claiming it. Man, you don't get your hand up with the people wall. How you going to claim something? How? How you know if it's God's will for you to have that? God might want you to have better, but you listening to some man claiming that little, really? Really, people? Really? How you know if that's God's will for your life? Because some man told you to name it and claim it. You was a cold duck. You was a cold duck. How many of y'all got it? How about that? <laughs> how many of y'all got it? And if you got it, how many of you still have it? And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the word again and said, Thy servant have gathered the money. Whoa, 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 thy servant, thy servant have poured out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them to do the work. This was happening right now. <laughs> the lady said, Father the mind, <laughs> since I ain't been giving all them tithes and all, but I ain't been giving my money away like that to these different churches, I was able to go on the lot and buy me a 20-20. Praise the Lord, babe. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You should have been, been able to buy you a 20-20. You should have been, been able to buy you a house. You should have been, been able to buy the things you need. But y'all been sitting up under this teaching because the book been here. And since the book been here, you didn't know. So now you're just giving and giving and giving and giving. Thank you going to get, 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 get. You've been giving and giving and giving. Thank you going to get, get, get. It ain't got nothing. 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 Like Jesus said, you don't owe a brother. Nothing. 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 Paul said, Paul said, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. All right, let's finish, let's finish, let's finish. I love this here. I love this here. And thy servant, and thy servant poured out the money that was found in the house and have delivered into the hand of them that do the work, that do the work, that do the work. For as Paul would say, Paul would say, a laborer is worthy of his pay. So if I'm worthy of my pay, or have they been worthy of their pay, what have they taught you? All that money you done gave them, what have they taught you? On some real talk. On some real talk. 
All them times you done stood in line to give your money away, what have they taught you? That have the oversight of the house of the Lord, and shall find the scribe, show the king, and shall find the scribe, show the king, saying, Helikiah, Helikiah, the priest, the priest has delivered me a book. Delivered me a book. A book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law. When the king had heard the words of the book of the law. When the king had heard the words of the book of the law. That he rent his clothes. The king was like, oh my God. Oh my God, where y'all get this from? Wait, 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 where does stuff come from? It's Bible, baby. But you rather get in your feelings. The king was like, where this? I'm a king. I'm a king. How I didn't know this exists. Where this came from? Because the previous kings didn't want this type of information going forward. So the previous king thought they had then got rid of the word of God. But yet here it is, Hikiah had found the book. So now he coming with the book and now he's reading the book. <laughs> I told you they've been playing. <laughs> so now <laughs> I told you. <laughs> but don't, 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 don't get in your feelings. Get in your Bible. Get in your Bible. And it came to pass when the king heard the word of the book of the law that he rent his clothes and the king commanded Helikiah the priest and Achiham and the son of Shaphan and the son of Chabor and the son of Melechiah and the son of Shaphan the scribe and the side a servant of the king saying go ye inquire of the Lord don't pour no oil on nobody go ye and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people for me and for the people and for all of Judah concerning the words of this book that is fine. God hate a lying tongue. God hate a lying tongue. So y'all thought God was going to sit back and just let these people handle y'all any kind of way? What kind of God y'all serve? On some real talk, people. What kind of God y'all serve? Like I told you, this book, I learned it in the penitentiary. This book, I learned it behind bars. This book had me to spend time with God. I was sharing with somebody the other day, right? And, I, and, 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 and back in 89, I got locked up in 94. I got no I back. I got locked up in 94. This so this 98. I had I had I put I put the picture on Facebook. I had boils all on my neck. I had boils on all behind my ear. The back of my head was swollen. I had got diagnosed with sarcoidosis. The dudes on the compound telling me, man, you're gonna die, man. Tell your tell, call your lawyer, call your mom, you're gonna die in here, Mike, you're gonna die in here. But every day I read this book and got closer and closer. And closer and closer and closer to God. Not no man, because he a bishop. Not no man, because he a pastor. Not no Got closer and closer to God. And got to know God, not no man. So how a man going to come to me? You can't tell me nothing. Not about this book and not about my God. The first thing they're going to say, he not. I'm, yeah, I'm humble enough. To give God the honor, the praise, and the glory. Not no man. And not about to be pouring no oil on nobody. <laughs> Believe that. So now. I'm going to read it to you. We're going to deal with that one. Let me show you something. The king repented for him and all the people. We quick to get in our feelings. I'm going to show you something. I wanted to start with the church of Lady Seoda. I'm going to go with Thyatira, but watch this. Because y'all need to know these churches. Y'all need to know about these churches. Y'all need to know what's happening with these churches. Watch this. And I'm going to go, I'm going to just touch on it because I'm tying in all this other stuff with a lying tongue that's quick to shed blood because we're going to go in Hosea. We're going to come out of Hosea. We're going to go in Isaiah. We're going to come out of Isaiah and tie all this stuff together. But watch this. 
Thyatira, 19 verse. I know thy works, the charity and service and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have few things against thee, because thou suffered the woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophet, to teach, to seduce my servant, to commit fornication and eat that sacrifice. But she won't get quick enough. Quick, get, get, don't get in your feelings, baby. Standing in the oh, shanda, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. baby. Don't nobody know what you're saying. Paul said, if it's not two or three of y'all, and at least one or two people interpret it, stop that. Stop that. Paul said, stop that. If you won't do that, you ain't God go over there. Go over there because you're messing these people up. The church of Thyatira was a permissive church. The church at Thyatira was allowing anything to go on in the charge. Why? What did they, well, come on, baby. You don't need to know how to teach. Just come stand there. You're a prophetess. These women going to run behind you. These women going to fight. You're a prophetess. You can shine down at your own, you know, all that noise. And ain't learn nothing. Ain't learning nothing. Spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel was so strong, Ahab was scared of her. Ahab was scared of her. Elijah was scared of her. Here it is, Elijah. How you gonna run from this woman? You a man of God. How you gonna run from this woman? Say, bro, mess the game up. But we gonna break this whole church. The church of Thyatira, we're gonna break the whole thing down. Watch this. God hit a lion tongue and hands that are quick to shed blood. Watch this. Watch this. Isaiah, the first chapter. Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1. Watch this. You new moons, <laughs> your appointed feast, my soul hate. You new moons, didn't I tell you that in the book of Galatians? They want, they want to observe days, months, and year. New moons, new moons, new moons, and appointed feasts. God hate that foolishness. But yet, but yet, we want, we, we, we want, oh, it's a new moon, it's a new feast, we gotta, really? When the Bible say God hate that? On the real, on the real. That's elementary teaching. Watch this, watch this. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are a trouble unto me. I'm weary to bear them. And when he spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. God said, I'm going to hide my eyes from y'all. Y'all with all little jibby, jibby, jabbing. Y'all with all that little foolishness. God don't want to have nothing to do with that foolishness. Why? Look at what the Bible say. I will hide my eyes from you. When you make many prayers, I will not hear your words. And your hands are full of blood. Your hands are full of blood. But yeah, you run around talking about you love somebody. <laughs> you run around like you holy than thou. <laughs> you run around like you all that. God said, man, y'all don't sit down somewhere with that foolishness. On some real talk. Watch this. Verse 16, wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Y'all doing that? No, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you don't, don't lie. Don't stop all that lying. Stop all that lying. Stop all that line. You ain't got to lie. You ain't got to. You ain't got to fake it to make it. I'm gonna give you what the word of God say. Hosea, come here. I need something from you, Hosea. Watch this. The word of the Lord came to Hosea, the son of Berai, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jerubbaal, and the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go. Take, go take, Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of Hordom. Go take thee a wife of Hordom and the children of Hordom. For the land what committed great Hordom departed from the Lord. So he went into Gomor, the daughter of Dibliam, which conceived and bare him a son. 
And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Okay, what do you say, brother man? Hosea, talking about Jezreel, talking about Jehu. How did Jehu come in the game? Because of the daughter of, of Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab and Jezebel, their daughter was throwing crosses. This is how Jehu got messed up. This is how Je this is not God is about to avenge. Why? Because she had to throw so many crosses in the game. Now a lot of blood was being shed. What takes us back to the sixth chapter of Proverbs. God hate a lying tongue because the hand's going to be quick to shed innocent blood because all this stuff to go together. So whether I come out of Revelation, whether I come out of Hosea, whether I come out of First or Second Kings, whether I come, it's all tied in together. But yet, we've been giving y'all one verse, and y'all been believing that foolishness. God hate a lying tongue, people. And God hate hands that are quick to run out there and shed blood. But yet, we go against one another as believers. I don't know why you come after me. Because <laughs> guess what? One thing for sure, two things for certain. You don't know enough. You don't know enough. But back to my you, I don't think I'm all that. I know I'm all that. You know why? God called me to be all that, just like he called you to be all that. But man wants you to be who he wants you to be. No, be who God called you to be. And watch how that play out for you. Watch how that, because guess what? Who's better than you? Nobody. God created all of us to be equal. God created all of us to walk in the image and the likeness of his son. So now when they run out there with all that noise, man, miss us. Miss us. Miss us. Because guess what? Watch. Listen. Watch. Listen, people. Watch. Listen. God hit a line. One thing they can't say. Bad of my life. That's one thing they can't ever say. I lied. Boom. God allowed the lying spirit to go and get in the prophet's mouth. And he prophesied nothing but lies. Just like today, a bunch of lies. And God hid a lying tongue. Get a hug of it. We good? We good. Papito, okay. We good? Know that you are greater and know that you are stronger and know that God got you, babe. I tell you what the word of God said. I tell you what the word of God said. I got a meeting to get to, so I'm about to go get ready for the meeting. I tell you what the word of God said, not what the man say. All right? Okay? We good? So when they run out there, don't pay them people no mind. Because guess what? Your pastor, he know this book. Pastor Mike, you know this book. It's given. It's given. It's given. But it's not about that. It's about strengthening the people. It's about inspiring the people. It's about teaching the people. One thing for shame. One thing for sure. Two things for certain. Y'all say, Pastor Mike, man, I'm being blessed. I know because God's going to bless you, dear. You think, you think God want a heaven full of dummies? God don't want no dummies. God wants some strong people who trust and believe in Him. One thing, no matter what come, no matter what come, you don't have to lie. You don't have to lie. Watch how God move in the midst of whatever's happening. Your trust, your faith, your belief should be in God. <laughs> but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise that some men come slackness, but is long suffering to us word not willing and that willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the work that are therein shall be burned up. 
saying then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hitting into the coming day of God, where in the heavens being on fire should be dissolved and elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we are called to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth where they dwell in righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look for such things, be diligent that we may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the will given unto him, has written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking of them, in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which that are unlearned, unstable, rather as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore be loved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also be in letter with, with the wicked, with the error of the wicked, far from Fall from your own steadfastness, but growing grace and the wisdom and the light of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now forever. Amen. So now watch this. We don't know how many years went by when the book was missing. We don't know. But what the Bible said, he found the book. And he found money. <laughs> he found the book. <laughs> and he found money. <laughs> Now that y'all done found the book, <laughs> y'all gonna find the book, <laughs> and y'all gonna find the money. <laughs> for the king said, <laughs> read it <laughs> for me, <laughs> for the people, <laughs> and for the whole house of Israel. So now, <laughs> guess what? Watch how y'all grow. Watch how y'all prosper. See what a lying tongue will do to you? A lying tongue will run you out the house of God. A lying tongue will run you out of the house of God. And God don't like a lying tongue. And he don't like a hand that are quick to shed innocent blood. Because a lying tongue has messed a lot of us up. False prophets, false teachers. If it's not true, that means it's false. If it's false, that means it's a lie. And if it's a lie, God don't like that. God allowed a lying spirit to come down and get into the mouth of the prophets. See that Jezebel? That Jezebel wasn't that nice. Ahab was scared of Jezebel. Elijah ran from Jezebel. And he was a man of God. So what makes you think that third in that third in that in that, in that third chapter of, of Revelation, Church of Thyatira, Jezebel was a bad girl. Don't play with her. She was a prophetess, as the Bible says, a prophetess. But guess what? In the church of Thyatira, they was letting anybody teach. In the church of Thyatira, they was letting anybody teach. In the church of Thyatira, they was letting anybody come in there. Why? It didn't matter. It was a permissive church. Just like the church of Pergamos was a, was a worldly church. The church of Sardis was a dead church. The church of Smyrna was a persecuted church. The church of Ephesus was a church that left its first love. Each one of these churches had characteristics of them. People, stay focused on God. How you know the book haven't been missed? The book was found, but the king didn't know it. Why? Because it went wrong from generation to generation to generation. Why? Because the king at one time didn't like the book, so he hid the book. He hid the book. But there's a point in time when God said, here the book go, I got, I got a number of copies of the book, here you go. I got nothing but servants that's going to go forth and share my word. Here you go, Mike, have you been a bit? So every day I come on here, teaching, inspiring, and encouraging every day. And the people, bro, I'm talking about dudes, so many dudes, Mike, 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 what's up, baby? Man, Mike, I'm learning, you're supposed to learn, bro. You're so you, the man's supposed to be just as powerful as anybody. The woman's supposed to be right there. Why? Because Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of woman. But yet we ain't been teaching no man. All the women running in the church. And then we turn the woman against the man. And then we got all this foolishness in the child. No, strengthen the man. Because the man going to help strengthen the woman. But no, we won't run around here with Jezebel spirits. Psst, man. I 
told y'all a couple of days ago, if a lot of these women would have listened to their man instead of listening to their pastor, then a lot of them would still be married and a lot of them would still be in relationship. But you're going to go listen to another man over the man that's with you. But God told him, God told Hosea, go get her. Hold up, God. But the Bible says he that find it a wife. No, God said go get her. Go get the prostitute and marry the prostitute. She caught up in whoredom, go get her and marry her. But the Bible said he find it a wife. God, let me go find her. No, go get her. Mess y'all up. He that find it a wife, find it a good thing. Show me anybody in the Bible that found their wife. Anybody. Anybody. Show me one that found their wife. But yeah, y'all believe that. Then y'all run out there with them mental. Well, the Bible say he that find it a wife. Man, they find you. Man, they find you. Man, when you know what he's looking for, he gonna find you. God told Hosea, go get go Go get her. 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 Adam didn't find Eve. <laughs> Adam didn't find Eve. God said, go Adam. Boom! Take Eve. Abraham didn't find Sarah. God said, take Sarah with you. Come on, man. I told y'all. They've been playing y'all with this Bible. Just imagine they took it and really taught you all how God, man, said, I'm done. I'm going to see a man by the music. I gotta, see, I gotta go see Miss O, see how Miss O doing. I got a couple of people I need to go holler at. <laughs> but if I gotta tell y'all where I'm at, but that would let y'all know, guess what? A few people, I, hey, make sure I make a few phone calls. I need to holler at a few people, and we all, hey, it's all love, baby. Better might have nothing but love for you. Y'all know love, baby. I'll call y'all in a few minutes. Like after, after I meet with these people, I'm gonna call a few of y'all, we're gonna meet up, we're gonna. I'm in a certain little town, it's gonna be alright, dude.